This is Auto House Z, and today I show off my fancy apron. Alright, so I have a customer W58 rebuild here today. We're almost finished with this rebuild, pretty much. Just need to put the cases on. So when the customer first contacted me about doing a rebuild, they complained that there was a whirring noise that went away with clutch in. The third gear intermittently would grind and then reverse would be hard to get into. So they said you always have to go into first and then reverse. Otherwise, if you just went straight into reverse, it would grind all the time. So I tore down the transmission and why don't we check out what I found. Alright, so this transmission got a full bearing, synchro, and seal rebuild kit. But addressing some of the customer issues, let's see what I did. Alright, so this got a new 3-4 slider and then also a 3-4 shift fork. I could tell the shift fork was worn on the fingers because there was a lot of slop in between here. On these sliders, you can see this raised edge, and um, these also get worn on uh, some transmissions. This is also a wear point. So for sure, the synchro teeth were worn on third. As part of every rebuild, I make sure these dog teeth are still sharp, and then I can deburr them and do a minor reshaping to get them ready for the new sleeve and synchro. I told you guys all that, but this is actually fourth gear. I meant to point to this one. So hopefully you can see some of the deeper work on the teeth. Um, these teeth get burrs on the top of them due to wear and then I can reshape them a little bit. You don't want to take off too much, just, just enough so the tooth profile is sharp. Same thing, just to keep things clean and then also as preventative maintenance, I reuse the 1-2 slider because this guy was still in good shape but also just a good clean and good uh, deburr on the teeth. As far as the whirring noise in neutral, for sure the input bearing that came on this trans was worn. You can typically tell because I'll grab the bearing and you can either do this kind of stuff or this kind of stuff. Also physically looking inside the bearing, the ball bearings in the race, you can sometimes just physically tell it's worn. Pretty cool, uh, AMP. Again, if you guys watch the 240SX Trans Rebuild Overview, AMP, same company, makes a brand new 3-4 shift fork and 3-4 slider. Regarding reverse, I think this is a pretty common problem with majority of these 80s Toyota boxes. It's tough to tell but reverse is not synchronized you can see uh, reverse gear reverse gear on the counter and then this is the reverse gear that gets essentially slammed into reverse gear on the output shaft w58s have a pretty interesting mechanism to shift into reverse and I'll show you guys what I'm talking about when I do the like the the bench test of shifting gears in this trans but essentially there's this arm right here and it'll do that and this entire gear will slide forward to engage with these two guys so in any car even with a trans with a synchronized reverse I would still recommend to shift into first gear and then into reverse just so it puts the trans in a more neutral position and it helps slow down the shafts. Toyota tried. What I'm saying by that, it got better with the newer generation W58s. And by the way, you can tell this is the older generation W58 because the center section is aluminum and then also on the newer W58s they had multi-piece synchros for at least third and second if I remember correctly. But yeah, if you guys see this nub right here on the actual shift fork, I think that's what they call it, the other shift rod, <clears throat> on the 
on the actual shift rod there's a raised nub that'll actually push into this little tic tac looking guy when you try to shift into reverse and this should force doo -doo 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 -doo, force a little bit of pressure on the fourth gear synchro to help slow down the transmission so that it's easier to shift into reverse and again this mechanism got even better on the later style w58s but still a good idea you got uh, any trans especially non-synchronized reverse shift into first and then reverse so you could tell the customer was grinding reverse because of wear on the teeth but this actually wasn't terrible i was able to do some deeper and reshaping and we were actually able to save all three reverse gears on this transmission. Uh, hopefully you guys can see that the deeper and the reshaping work. Another common theme with third gear is that third gear rides directly on the output shaft, meaning there's no needle bearings inside. So one thing I like to do is actually hone out or polish the ID of third gear so it has an easier time to ride on the output shaft. Since again, there's no cage needle bearings like there is for, you know, second, first, fourth, sometimes reverse even has bearings in it. All right, so why don't I talk about the peculiar thing that I found in this transmission. The peculiar surprise. All right, so this is the original first gear that came in this W58. I'm gonna show you guys the back side, and it's kinda hard to tell by the light, but hopefully you guys can see it. You see anything wrong with this thing? So the, immediately I noticed there's some discoloration, like you see rainbow colors. Typically that means it, it's overheated. Sometimes you can even tell because the gear will look black. Same thing, the gear teeth will be darker than normal and that'll be a telltale sign of overheating. Another thing, when I t pressed this off the shaft, I noticed like this was incredibly hard to separate the needle bearing and race from the transmission, or I should say from the gear. So hopefully you guys can see there's actually wear on this thrust surface there's actually burrs from the race grinding into this thrust surface. That's why it's discolored. There's physical metal wear right here. Here's the race again. Hopefully you can see some of that discoloring. So I know it might be hard to see, but there's also discoloring and physical metal like flaking and wear on this surface where it was grinding against the back thrust surface of first gear. So I ended up having to pull apart a spare W58 just to rob the third gear race and needle bearing out of to do the rebuild for that guy. More and more common because of the age of stuff I work on do you need spares because even if this was available this would be horrendously expensive. I'm talking about like, I don't know, three four hundred for one gear maybe so yeah because of the age of stuff I work on more and more it seems like you do need a spare box or a spare you know stash of parts in order to really do a rebuild otherwise what were you gonna do with this thing right alright so the last thing I want to show you guys is the output shaft rear bearing and fifth gear removal and install tool there's actually a factory Toyota tool that looks a lot different than this, but this is the OTC replacement and this thing's a lot better. And I have an old Toyota technical training manual that you would have gotten as a Toyota tech if you went to like the training center. And um, that's how I got the part number for this exact tool. So this is a very expensive tool and it took me a very long time to find it. And hopefully you can see it removes and installs fifth and then the output bearing. The fifth gear set is really 
readily available in the aftermarket and I and I imagine it's because this tool is so hard to find and horrendously expensive that people are just cutting off fifth gear plus that bearing so so if you're looking for someone to rebuild your W58 I would I would 100% recommend like hey do you actually have the tool to do this and I'll tell you exactly why so there's fifth gear and here's the output rear bearing you have to take these two off in order to take the shafts out of the center plate so this is not going to get chucked up in a press no way so you have to find some tool to grab these two and pull them off these are pressed on with a tremendous amount of force so back in the day before i knew that i was going to build the a lot of these i had a gigantic three jaw puller to pull these guys off and even then it was still really dangerous and really difficult Spare W58 that's in my home garage right now, I think that's exactly what happened. The shop did not have the proper tool to pull these off. So what ended up happening was that it, when I opened that transmission back open again, it seems like they just opened the cases. It seems like unfortunately what they did was just take the two cases off, look inside and be like, oh, it's okay. And then glue it back together once they found out that they didn't have the tool to press these two guys off. All right, why don't we do a bench test? That's it for my W58 customer rebuild overview and bench test and for my fancy apron. Thank you to the customer who this transmission is. I'll send you a link to the video. Hopefully you get to watch this. And thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you like these videos for transmission stuff because I really enjoy doing this stuff. If you have any suggestions about what I can add, what, what other stuff you'd like to see, um, tools or tech tips about how how I build these things or how I clean them make sure to like and subscribe leave a comment in the description below um, you can support us on patreon actually you can support me on patreon so I can do more cool stuff like this make sure to check the website out for stickers hopefully my new designs come in time and I update the website in time because I have four new designs one two three four Again, thanks for the support, you guys. Stay safe. Take care.